Good morning, everyone. It is now time for episode two of the Blind Metal Gamer Podcast. You're probably wondering, what is today's episode going to be about? Well, I'm preparing to tell you, and it's going to be about the launch and the current state of WWE 2K20 for PS4, Xbox One, and I believe PC. And I'm going to tell you right now, the launch was thick. It was not good at all. I personally pre-ordered the game, the Deluxe Edition. Luckily, uh, I didn't have too much problems, with the exception of maybe a couple of things not working uh, correctly. Um, but I did uh, hear of a plethora and a myriad of problems, such as crashes, freezes, uh, logos not working, things like that. So, you know, obviously, the game didn't turn out too well. And I'm going to go into a brief backstory as to why that happened. What happened was, Ukes, who had developed the WWE games since 2000, had uh, backed out, or rather not backed out, but rather were let go of the project in uh, August of this year. And what happened was, when this happened, Visual Concepts had to make the game themselves. They wanted to, 2K wants to have visual concepts make the the uh, WWE games. And Yux was helping them with motion capture and such like that, whereas uh, visual concepts were doing the, I believe, the animations, the scripts, and whatnot here in the States. And the other stuff was being done over in Japan. Well, uh, when this happened, the game kind of went silent. Nobody really talked about it. We didn't hear much about it. And that was why uh, Visual Concepts was doing it in-house, and they wanted it to be done uh, like that, they being 2K. And it created a myriad and a plethora of issues. Now, you're probably wondering, what are some of these issues? Well, it would include crashing, freezing... Logo's not working properly. (coughs) Uh, Characters that were non-playable coming to life and just dancing around the ring and whatnot. It would, uh, let's see, online wouldn't work properly. I remember personally having a situation where, and I don't know if any other uh, person who might be listening had this happen, but... You would be in a match online, right? And the music would not stop like it's supposed to. And uh, you would have music be playing during the match. And I didn't really like that. You know, personally speaking, I didn't really like that because we're, I'm not only a podcaster, I'm a YouTube creator and a streamer. So I uh, kind of don't want to, you know, get copyright struck or copyright struck, and I'm sure a lot of you out there listening don't want that either, um, let's see, there would be a lot of lag online, there would be crashes in Road to Glory mode, now I have experienced that, in particular with the tables match, I would, I won a match, and it just crashed and burned, um, let's see, uh, logos wouldn't work, uh, downloads wouldn't work, so eventually, they they uh, released a patch about a week after the game's launch, and did it really uh, do anything to fix the game itself? Well, there were some things that were uh, fixed, such as the ability to um, let's see, the ability to put logos on your character, but there was a lot of other things that were still broken, such as the aforementioned crashing and freezing that I personally experienced. Um, the uh, online is still a bit laggy. I had that one issue prop up with the music. Um, let's see. The graphics are still a bit jank. There are no correction. They're a lot jank. and Not that good. Uh, let's see. They 
totally botch the created arena where the color palette swaps when you're selecting a color is not correct. When you're creating a superstar, they are correct. I also heard that there's issues with downloaded community created content that you're unable to download it or something like that. Hopefully they will get that resolved in another patch and I'm hoping that when they make the next patch it's a lot bigger and fixes a lot of the issues a lot of the audio glitches, a lot of the commentary glitches, stuff like that. The game received very poor reviews on uh, IGN and other gaming sites such as Metacritic. Uh, there were people that I had talked to that were actually wanting to get their money back. Uh, the, I had talked to one individual. Uh, they were wanting to get their refund back. They were so angry that they didn't get the pre-order content uh, in their words, they wanted to break the disc in half. Personally, I had thought about, um, the ideology of possibly getting my money back, but I thought about it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick with it because I bought it, I might as well stick with it and enjoy it. Sure, it may take a little more time, but I learned my lesson that um, maybe I shouldn't buy these games every year. You know, maybe I should uh, not purchase these on a yearly basis and wait for the reviews. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's kind of a bit of the backstory on WWE 2K20's launch and why it was a bit of a disaster. Now, I'm going to talk about... <clears throat> The uh, hopefully the things that they're going to hopefully fix with future installments. I'm going to talk quickly about DLC Bump of the Night. Um, I can honestly say with experience, the Bump of the Night DLC was great. Granted, there was a couple of things that I wish they would have uh, fixed, such as the uh, OMG move uh, selection. They should have given that to you from the start for that particular thing. If they knew that was going to be a thing that needed to be done. Uh, I do like the addition of the Fiend Bray Wyatt. I'm glad that they put that in last minute and made that part of the DLC. I enjoy the Halloween themed characters and uh, whatnot. Although, granted, they are reskins of existing characters. That is a bit of a bummer, but they did add some new power ups and new abilities to make it worth a look. Um, I can honestly tell you the Bump of the Night Showcase with the Swamp Father Bray Wyatt. That's a very good idea. That's a very good concept. And I hope the 2K and visual, <clears throat> visual concepts builds upon this once they get their uh, issues worked out with the game. I would say get the game's issues worked out first, then get the uh, DLC content done. That way it's done right. Not that the <clears throat> bump of the night was bad. Or not that it was negative, I just wish that they would do it right and get it done the right way. And uh, give us, the, the players, the consumers, something to enjoy and not be angry about it. Because I know YouTube sites such as WrestleGamia, they did a whole plethora of videos on the glitches of the game, what was bad about it, and then they did a thing where uh, you basically could... Uh, listen to them uh, talking about the glitches and what was wrong with it in that sense. But uh, back to the DLC. I think that the first DLC bump of the night was great, personally speaking. And I'm looking forward to the next DLC, 2K Originals Pack. I'm looking forward to it. I just want them to add more uh, emphasis on originality as far as characters. Uh, because I know with the first DLC, they had to rush to get it out there. And I understand that. I'm fully aware of that. But reskins of existing characters, come on, 2K. We've already been down this road. We've been down this avenue several times. You know, you've had opportunities to put originality into your product, and you didn't do that. Granted, yeah, the showcase was original. That was great, and the theme was great, and the arena was great. But come on. Reskinned characters with different fired up mood, different payback abilities. You know, that's your way of being original. I mean, come on. Uh, now I want to uh, talk a bit about 
what the, I mean, I've pretty much mentioned they need to fix a lot of the, all the stuff that's wrong with it. But here's what I hope they do as far as patches. They've done release the first one. I hope that they release these in maybe two week to one month increments. That way, it'll give them time to work on the patches and get them where they need to be in terms of quality. That way, when we, the players, download them and install them, it will be ready to go on all platforms. Uh, one thing that I do hope that they add as far as uh, improvements would be maybe the ability for custom soundtracks with Spotify Premium. I know that they're going to be adding a creative championship down the road, probably in one of their more major patch updates. Uh, but I think if they would add cause the ability to use custom soundtracks for Spotify Premium, that would be amazing. Because that would give a lot of content creators who use it to make their own federations more uh, authenticity as far as entrances. The one drawback to that's going to be artist permission. Because with all of that, you're going to need you know licenses for music and licenses for um, songs and whatnot. And I don't think Spotify Premium offers that. I think they just offer better audio quality without the ads. So, um, I think that the whole licensing issue would be a thing. I know that uh, with my own personal podcasting experience, I don't use music for that reason because I'm not going to pay, you know, God knows how much for licenses for music. Also, um, I know that the WWE Network, for that same reason, does not use uh, licensed music unless, you know, Unless they own it, which I think they might own a couple of things. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Uh, back to WWE 2K20. Uh, let's see, we're getting created Championship. We're getting, uh, God knows what else in other substantial updates. But if they did give us uh, custom soundtracks with Spotify Premium, that would be amazing. But I don't think that's going to happen. <clears throat> but all in all, is WWE 2K20 playable? In its current state, I would say more so than at launch. I would say if you're going to buy the game, I would say wait a little bit because they're still going to patch it up and they're still going to improve it. So that's just my two cents on the situation. So this is going to conclude episode two of the Blind Metal Gamer podcast. I will see you guys next time with episode three where I'm going to more than likely be talking about Mortal Kombat 11 and the DLC and my thoughts on the roadmap for how they're going to give that content its uh, rollout and all that good stuff. So, until next time, I will see you guys later. Enjoy, and so long everyone, and I'll see you on the next podcast.